and the hazard and the community. And God will sober people. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred places. You are sent to hear the contract of that.
was raised to have a status with its own about properly blessed last May 20. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a day for us to reflect on what the Second Vatican Council said about monastic life. It is especially to be found in its doc document on the consecrated life. Because within the consecrated life, the monastic has an honored place. Indeed, the first religious were monastic from the days of St. Anthony in Egypt, not St. Anthony of Padua, who is more recent, but St. Anthony of Egypt of the fourth century, so that monastic life in the church began in North Africa. In the document, Perfecte Caritatis, on the renewal of the religious life, especially paragraph 7 and 9, we have the mind of the church on monastic life today. For me, it is a joy, because when that document was signed, finalized, during the fourth session of the Second Vatican Council in 1965, I was there as the last bishop. I was 32 years old that day. But my faith has achieved. It is just a fact. It is not an achievement. <laughs> the Second Vatican Council says that the monastic life is made up of institutes entirely ordered towards contemplation. Members give themselves over to God alone in solitude and silence in constant prayer and willing penance, penance or mortification or self-denial. Monasteries have an honored place in the mystical body of Christ in which all the members do not have the same function as St. Paul wrote to the Romans 12, 4. With an abundant Production of fruits of holiness. Monks put lend luster to God's people. That is, monks make the people of God grow and shine. They withdraw from the world in order to be better at God's service. The venerable institution of monastic life must be carefully preserved in the church. Through long centuries, the monastic it has deserved well of Christ and of human society and of the church. That is, the monastic life has done much to owe the gratitude of the church and of the world. The principal duty of monks is to present to the Divine Majesty a service at once humble and noble within the walls of the monastery. In the document on missionary life in the church and gentes, that is the document on the mission work, missionary engagement, because the church must spread. In that document, there could not be forgotten the underlining of the role of monasteries in the newly evangelized countries. The council writes, the various undertakings aimed at establishing the contemplative life are worthy of special mention. The contemplative life should be restored everywhere because it belongs to the fullness of the church's presence. That means the 
child is not fully present among a people, if among those people in the church there are no monasteries, monasteries contribute to the fullness of the expression of the following of Christ. There are many ways in which we follow Christ, and the ways are mainly three. The majority follow Christ in the lay state. That is, the lay people who are called to evangelize the secular sphere. The secular order means the family, the work, profession, like doctor, lawyer, businessman, politics, government, of course, which means Oka, it means Abuja, it means United Nations, national and international public relations. They must be permeated with the spirit of the gospel. That is the area specific to lay people, and the lay people are 99% of the church. But there are also clerics, that means bishops, priests, and deacons. Bishops are about 5,000 in the world, including those who are outside the penalty area now, like me, those who are on pension, those who are in the evening of their own service. The priests are some religious majority diocesan and the number about 400,000. Then the religious men who are not priests, they may be monks or friars or brothers in active congregation, they are about 55,000. Because it is a very difficult vocation. If you doubt it, join them. <laughs> the, the religious women are about 700,000. They were almost, seven, yes, they were almost more than that, about 100. After Vatican II, their number went down. Nevertheless, they are the majority. Whether there are more women in heaven than men, I don't know, because I don't know there yet. But in the church down here, the women are more. 